Try bringing the camera forward a little bit more. See how the audio works. Welcome back. <laughs> Where to begin? Uh, sorry, it's been so long here since I've done a video. I actually got a message from Paul Coat, making trying to make sure where I am and if I'm okay. I'm I'm here, Paul. <laughs> I just got wrapped up in a bunch of things. So, where to begin? Um, first. It was kind of a funny YouTube video I stumbled across. It's titled, Worst Lathe in the World. Go watch it. Really entertaining, and yeah, it's definitely the worst lathe in the world. Um, so what's been going on here is, out of complete boredom, looking for something to do, I decided to make a little hammer set. So if I need it, I could just whack on things easily if I had to move them a few thousands. Especially the comment I made about the machinist friend that said use a test indicator and get your end mill, check, check it on the flutes, get your end mill straight. So, um, successfully made the first piece of it handle and an aluminum head and I was going to make the whole set. So it's going to be aluminum, brass, lead, and a hard piece of wood. And I was getting ready to go out and buy a nice chunk of brass, which kind of expensive, but a lot of clothes. Um, when my mother-in-law came back from her trip to Karachi and handed me a two foot long, one inch diameter piece of brass that weighed a ton. Um, so I guess it's pretty inexpensive over there. She only paid 1,200 rupees. <laughs> so I'll let you guys uh, go look it up. See ya. It's FedEx again. He went down, up, now he's going back down. I think he's lost. So I'll let you guys figure out how much that was. Here, that piece, as far as I can tell, would have been around $70. Um, so I was going to turn it, and the hard thing is uh, one inch, I don't have a collet for it. So I had to put the chuck back on the lathe, and a two foot section, I figured I'll just cut it in half, because 12 inches fits on my shelf, all my stock is 12 inch. Now the next 12 inch piece, how do I cut it so I'm not wasting really material and I can get it in the lathe, so I forgot what dimension I actually cut it to, but it was poking out of the chuck pretty far. And I figured I'm just going to take light cuts because I can't use a live center on it, there's no room. So I'll show you a video here in a minute of just machining at a couple of different angles of turning the lead and I'm not sure what kind of lead it is. If anybody knows, I mean it has a weird spiral on the bar itself and so I tried to identify that. I've seen that in pictures on other materials so I don't know whether that means tempered, cold rolled or something. If somebody knows, leave a comment. But I was turning it and just Turning it down the size was fine, and then I decided to just do a quick chamfer on the edge of it when it caught, and it stalled the lathe out, the motor froze, I could hear it humming, and I hit the power switch as fast as I could. So cleared out the jam, took the piece out, turned the lathe back on, and it's dead. controller's gone the second time and I don't know why. Um, I had one time something shorted out in the motor and I didn't know it. I was turning a piece of aluminum but the second the peel off piece touched the ways there was a big spark. Figured out, blew out the motor, cleaned it out, and everything still worked. So that was a major spark. Now, next time I did something and I accidentally sparked the minus 12 volt supply in the motor controller and blew out everything. All the chips are gone. Send it off to the old UHF guy, does a great job, came back looking brand new. He replaced everything on the board. 
Um, I've had since then, when you're threading, you probably had it where it stalls, it goes trying to go and then it can't. Never burnt it out. So now why this time, when it jams and I hit the power switch fast, it just wiped out the motor controller. So it's gone, it's back. It, it just arrived today. I did the UPS tra or, uh, USPS tracking. It just arrived there, so I'm waiting to hear from him what happened to it. Um, once they get that back, then I'll be back up and I can finish the brass head and then get on to the other pieces. So that's what's been kind of occupying my time, and I look forward to getting the set complete. Might make a nice little box for it or something, so it'll look cool. So that's one thing that's going on. Um, I uh, also mentioned, uh, you know, go and watch this worth laid, Worst Lathe in the World. There's a song that I listened to on YouTube, and I downloaded it a long time ago. Listen to it way back when. It's called Everyone's Free to Wear Sunscreen. Listen to this song, because when I did back then, I could identify with a lot of things that were said in it. And today at 61, uh, probably everything I can identify with in that song. So that's just a little bit of info here. Um, did make the smaller handle for it. There's the new guy and here's the old guy. I figured out, you know, why destroy it? Just keep them. So it still works out really nice and thrilled with it, how it works and stuff. What else have I got here? Um, RTL SDR. Since the lay's been down, I've been just playing around more with the ham radio, amateur radio stuff. Um, oh, let me show you the video on tuning, or turning the brass first. So here's the brass. That's pretty easy. Um, came out nice, nice finish. Oh, also the best finish I got, if you can notice, that's the little machine shop high-speed steel insert. The, the carbides didn't do a good job on brass. Uh, everything I tried didn't do a very good finish on it, but I got a really, really nice finish with the high-speed steel insert on the 3 8 AR holder. Alright, so let me take you over to the bench. Uh, this might bore some people, but this is SDR ham radio. Hopefully that looks good. Close up the garage door, change the lighting so there's not that much glare here. Um, I always wanted to listen to CW shortwave, but the radios to really do it are upwards of a thousand dollars so I saw this guy at 100 kilohertz 1.7 gig that covers just about everything and RTL is just the chipset that's on here it's an RTL 2832 receiver and this one's actually got two chips to be able to cover this kind of ridiculous frequency range SDR stands for software um, Designed radio. Oh, I keep forgetting what that stands for. And I wrote it down someplace here. Yeah, software defined radio. So you're doing it through software, and it's kind of cool. But you look at the picture here, it's a kick because this is a big unit with a little antenna, and then you look here, it's a bigger antenna with a little unit. And I'll swing the camera over here so you can see the device. It's actually. It's smaller than a pack of cigarettes, so it's really teeny. It just fits in the palm of your hand. It's kind of cool. But, um, actually, so where is the software? Here's the software for it. 
And if I hit play, it makes a lot of noise. Actually, I'll hit stop so you can see it. You've got all kinds of different controls here. Bandwidth, noise limiters, automatic gain controls, automatic frequency controls. It's a USB device, so you just select it. And if you guys are interested in this, get the program, it's free. Um, then you can consider any one of these different kind of guys for uh, being a receiver. What this is showing me, this is here's the frequencies right now, and you can click over here and you can start shifting so you can go up in frequencies, you can click on the left and go down, and you can see this is just a noise floor, but there is conversation going on here, and here's the audio of it streaming down. This is like the matrix zone. So <laughs> if I hit play and I'll go and click on it. So, that's NOAA, the weather or whatever. So you can go all over the place and the nice thing is you can see what conversations are taking place. See, again, there's a bug here. I'm shifting frequencies and nothing's moving, so I don't understand what gives. So I've got a lot to figure out on this thing. Uh, what happens if I click over here? <laughs> Nothing. Sh oh, because I'm not playing. Down. There you go. So, when I shift down, there's stuff here, there's something going on. It's just buzzing. But there's a lot of peaks and a lot of different things. I don't know what half of this stuff is, so like I said, it's going to be a big learning curve for me. Go down, it's a two meter hand band. Is that a conversation that took place on this? I don't know what that is, but it's just noise. But you essentially, you can just go through every frequency and look for stuff. Let me cut the noise off. But that's what um, RTL SDR is all about. And the software that I downloaded is what? It's in here. It's called. Oh, it's in here. I found the SDR Sharp program to be better than this other HD SDR program That's, which is just weird I've seen a lot of YouTubes on this stuff and I don't know there's a beep going on the audio is just so low on this thing am I all the way up yeah pretty much so I don't know I gotta play around with both of them but just a heads up, so hope you guys enjoy.